Our today's tutorial, I want to talk about three reasons, three wonderful reasons, why you would consider printing a mix within Pro Tools. So this is the alternative to bouncing offline. It takes a little more time, but I'm going to give you three reasons why you might want to consider it, and the three main reasons why I always bounce this way for final mixes. Reason number one, if I'm using hardware inserts, which means I have gear hooked up, which I do, so I'll show you. I'm running some of this session through the distressor, like the kick and snare, and I'm not sure because I can't really see, but that SSL 500 series and Neve, all my vocals are going through there. I'll make sure I get a good look at that. In addition to that, I get this manly stereo pull tech EQ. I'm running my guitars through there. Um, and then my whole mix, it's coming through the dangerous compressor and dangerous EQ. And when I mix this for the record, I used every one of those dangerous units. I used the 2Bus Plus, the compressor and the EQ. And that's typically my final mastering um, setup is those three together. Reason number one, using hardware inserts. It's if you bounce offline, it's not going to take those those components into consideration. You actually have to print them within Pro Tools. So that's reason number one. Reason numero dos, it allows me to listen through my session one more time in real time as the mix kind of goes together. If I'm mixing it offline, it's silent. So that's the way Pro Tools does it, and it does it quickly. So I use that for rough mixes. I'll just mix it off, no problem. But when I'm doing a final mix, I'm gonna listen back in real time and I'm gonna print it. And I'll show you how I do that in a moment. And I wanna listen one more time, say, oh, is there anything else I would like to adjust for this particular mix? So that's reason number two, it's a final listen through. Reason number three, ooh, confetti. Uh, reason number three is going to be if I need stems. So if I'm going to be exporting stems, so for us, like this song, this was a, a worship song that I wrote, and then we performed live. So this is a live version of a worship song we'll be listening to. And I will, and I have, so I've bounced the stems. So I've bounced the bass stem, just the bass. I've bounced all the drums. So the drums by themselves, uh, all the background vocals. I've bounced all the guitars, all the, the pads, the piano. So I bounced them all separately so we can use them as backing tracks in church. So. Let's say your bass player doesn't show up um, for one day in church. I mean, bass players are typically pretty reliable. <laughs> Let's say the electric guitar player doesn't show up. That's more like it. Uh, for church, you can trigger the tracks. So just like you would, you would download tracks perhaps off um, Loop Community or another service that's similar, you can create those tracks and you can create stems. So bouncing them offline, especially if you're using some hardware components, is going to be great. So you can bounce them and then export them individually as stereo tracks. So you can export just the drums, just the music, just the effects, whatever you would like to do. Just the lead vocal, just the click, whatever it is. So those are the three main reasons that I like to use printing within Pro Tools as my final mix option. And I find it's very beneficial. So how do I set this up? So this is gonna be it. So. That's the three main reasons we're gonna set this up and that's the end of the tutorial. A little bit easier, I find, to look at it like this. So I have all of my instruments, they're coming to these four groups. So all of my effects are coming here, all my music's coming here, all my vocals are coming here, and all my bass and drums are coming here. So what, does, what do they sound like just on their own, just so you can hear? Let's go to a chorus. Typically everything's in the chorus. I'm gonna mute everything except the music right now. Okay, and now I'm just gonna bring the vocals. The captive broke in the glory of Christ. There's a lot of bleed because it was loud. Here's the drums. I skipped over the effects, but here are the effects. 
Okay. So I have everything coming into these four main groups. So I want to show you the routing. So everything and lands here. So I won't take you through that, but everything lands here. So every one of these groups is being routed to the same spot, a stereo bus. Here is stereo bus, and stereo bus is a stereo aux channel. And it's tied to this master fader. So anything I put on this master fader, notice that, um, that I put right here, is the stereo bus. So these are tied together. So anything I do with this master fader is going to affect this stereo bus. It gives me an extra 10 inserts to play with, up to 10 if, if I need it. From here, this stereo bus is being routed to print. And print is a stereo audio track. So aux indicated by this arrow okay master indicated by this thing that looks like an e meaning the sum of all and then audio is this waveform so i have these three aux tracks so <laughs> these four aux tracks coming over here to the stereo stereo bus which is a stereo aux tied to this master fader and it's coming here to this print so everything, everything in the session ends up here. So if I press go and mute, everything should be muted. And it is. So I know everything is routed. Like everything gets routed down to those two channels in this circumstance. So I'm set up to record. The next thing that I want to do is I want to enable pre-roll and post-roll. And I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to take uh, my marker. So... From start, I have a start marker and an end marker. So I could actually zoom in on the start by pressing, I zoomed in with T and I can zoom in out with R and then I can hit the right arrow to see the end of my selection. So that's the end. These look pretty good. I could even, I could even center this up by hitting option F. Wow, I'm learning so much. What I like to be in when anytime I'm making these, um, whenever I'm printing within Pro Tools, I always like to have pre and post roll on. And then I always am in quick punch mode, if, which is toggled by hitting six on your numeric keypad. So six back to normal record mode and six again, this is P, okay, um, in a white circle. That's quick punch. Quick punch will record the pre roll and record the post roll. So if you get any clicks or pops, you can actually, you can actually drag back for whatever your pre and post roll is, in, in my case, one bar. So when I'm ready to record, so I have my selection, I have my pre and post roll on, which is also toggled by command K, that's cool. I'm ready to hit three on the numeric keypad to record this. So I hit three, you notice how it starts one bar before, and then it comes in and I'm recording. So what I love about this is I can go through and now I can listen and if I hear any mistakes, if I want to adjust any of my hardware gear, perhaps I miss, missed it in the mix, I can make final adjustments and then I can just start from where I left off. So for example, if I thought, you know, the verse came in and, and perhaps I wanted to turn down the effects just a little bit. So I could just grab this effects and I could grab from here perhaps to to the second part of this first one and I could just turn them down. And then I can just start the playback, sorry, the recording from verse one now, and I can go to the end. My heart rejoices in the Lord our God. My so I can make all these changes or small changes. If big changes, you want to hit them in the mix, but I can make these changes as I'm lis listening back to this final take of the master. And when it's all finished, what I like to do is I like to listen to the punch-ins and the punch-outs. So if this is a new clip, I'm going to make sure it marries up with this quite nicely so there's no click or pop. So I'll just take it out of input monitor and I'll play this portion. There's no click or pop. That one's good. So I'll go to this next one. There's a click and a pop there. So I drag this back and maybe add like a little crossfade. And now I listen to it. And that's a little bit smoother. Okay. Um, so you're going to go through 
the entire song, and once you get to the end, this is the 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 last part. So once you get to the end and you're happy with all those transitions, you've listened through them all, you're going to render this as one clip. So as long as you have your clip list enabled, so I'll turn it off. So right now I have no clip list. It's gone because it was right here. I'm going to turn it back on, and now I can see it. So I have my clip list. I can see I'm going to take the entire selection. It's important that you take the entire selection from the start to the end in all the clips. So right now I have four clips. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to render them with Shift Option 3. So once they are rendered, I'm ready to export this as one stereo file. And you'll notice as soon as I click on it, it gets highlighted in the clip list. So you right click in the clip list, export clips as files, and then you go through and you just you determine where your what your file type is, um, choose where it's going to be. So in my case, it is going to live here in my bounce folder. So I could click choose. Oh, this is the right spot. And then I'm going to hit export. It has exported and it's as easy as that. So there's three three reasons why I why I only bounce within Pro Tools when I'm ready for the final stage of my mix. So that is printing within Pro Tools, and I hope you give that a go, and I'll see you in the next one.